Can I retire at 60 years old with $250,000 saved for retirement? That's what we're going to look at today on the Your Financial EKG YouTube channel. We're going to go through an exact scenario. Can you retire at 60 with $250,000? saved for retirement. I have a client of mine, her name is Joanne, and Joanne is a flight attendant. She's 60 years old and she wants to know, can I retire? Can I stop working and retire? So that's what we're gonna look at today on the board. Now the reason I wanna look at this is because the average save for retirement at 60 years old, the average save for retirement is $405,000, that's at 60. Now that's the average. Remember, the average is skewed because you've got a lot of large numbers up top, you've got a lot of zeros at the bottom, and when you do an average, it skews the numbers to the high side. But what I wanna look at is the median. The median save for retirement at 60 years old is $130,000. The median takes the high, takes the low, takes everybody and goes right to the middle. And it tells us where exactly we are in our retirement savings. And if we look at this, the normal American has about $130,000 saved for retirement at 60. Double that if you're married to 260. Is that enough for you to retire at 60? Well, let's look at this. So we've got Joanne. She's a flight attendant down here at the St. Pete Clearwater Airport. She's 60 years old. She has $250,000 saved for retirement amongst various retirement investing accounts. Now, her social security at 67 would be $2,500. Now, if she takes Social Security at 67, she'll get 100% of her full retirement benefit. Now, if she decides to take Social Security early at 62, she's only gonna get 70% of her full retirement benefit. And if she waits till 70, if she's an overachiever, a broccoli eater, she's gonna get 124% of her full retirement benefit. Now, we're gonna go through a schedule showing her taking Social Security at 67. I'm also gonna go through a strategy taking Social Security at 62. So hang on, there's gonna be two distinct scenarios, 67 and 62 for Social Security, just to see which is gonna work out best for Joanne. Now her current annual expenses are $3,000 and there's no mortgage in that. So all of these expenses are variable expenses, meaning they're gonna go up and down with CPI. And we all know that normally when prices go up, they ain't coming back down. So this is her light bill, this is her you know, power, this is her cable, her streaming bill. This is everything but not any fixed payments. Remember, if there was a fixed payment within these expenses, her inflation rate would be a lot less. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna give a 3% inflation rate on her expenses because there's no fixed expenses inside of this number. Now, she has told me that she is willing to work part-time to make $1,000 per month until she's 80, continuing to do what she's doing as a flight attendant because she likes the perks. So she's gonna work part-time if need be to make about $1,000 a month for those perks that she enjoys because she likes to travel and we need some extra income to help cover these expenses. She is single and she lives in Florida, so we're not worried about state income tax. So let's look at this. 60 years old, we have $250,000 saved for retirement. The first strategy I wanna look at is taking Social Security at 67. So we're 60 years old, we've got $250,000 saved for retirement, and we're gonna start taking Social Security at 67. Now, there's some factors we need to include in this. The first factor is what's our rate of return for the money, the $250,000 that's in the market? What's the rate of return on that? We're gonna use a 6% rate of return. Now, what do I mean by rate of return? What I mean is this $250,000 is invested in the market, okay? So we manage money for Joanne, and she's got that money in the market. 
she's gonna make 6%. We're projecting 6%. The reason that we're projecting, not guaranteeing, but projecting 6% is because the stock market since the 1950s has averaged 10%. It's 8% with inflation. So we're gonna go 2% behind the market. We're gonna be a little bit more conservative now that she's retired, and we're gonna project out 6%. Now we can project out four, five, six, whatever. I feel comfortable at six, just looking at market history, okay? Now, is the market gonna repeat? I don't know. It's done pretty good the last 100 years, and that's with a lot of stuff going on. So I think 6% is a really good number that we can put in there. But we're also gonna look at inflation. And we're gonna run inflation at 3%. Now, the 109 year average on inflation is 3.27%. Now you might be saying, Drew, remember what's gone on in 2023 and in 2022, inflation is rampant. Yes, I realize that. But we're not trying to pull out an individual year and say, oh, inflation's gonna be at 7% for the next 30 years of your retirement. It's gonna get back to the mean. It's called a reversion to the mean. It will happen, it takes time. So 3% is what we're gonna project out for inflation. Now, her expenses, day one, are $3,000. So that's our expenses. We're gonna get some part-time work, so that's a thousand bucks a month, that's our PT. So that means we need $2,000 per month coming out of our $250,000 saved for retirement. Now this $2,000 is gonna go up with inflation. We do this on a monthly basis. I'm gonna show you on an annual basis on the board, but in our software, in the Your Financial EKG, in the software that we use, this $2,000 gets a bump each month. It's 3% inflation. You divide that by 12, we bump that each month because I wanna be as exact as I can to the penny on what inflation is gonna look like. Because listen, your retirement, is not something that we just wanna roll dice and hope it works. Your retirement is something that we wanna have as exact as we possibly can. I can't guarantee, I can guarantee two things, death and taxes, right? We're all gonna die and we're all gonna pay taxes, but I wanna be as exact as we possibly can on this money here. So we got $250,000, we're earning 6% a year, we've got 3% inflation, we need $2,000 a month, we gotta do this for seven years, how long is this gonna last and what's the value gonna be at 67? Well, at 67, we're projected to be at $87,756. That's a huge jump, right? 250 to 87. Does not make me feel comfortable right off the bat. But if we're willing to continue to move forward, let's look at this. So at 67, we're gonna get Social Security. We're gonna have the same projections here. We're gonna go 10 years out. We're gonna have a 6% rate of return and 3% inflation. Oops, this is inflation. Now, what's our expenses grown to? At this point, expenses are 38.29. Okay, we're gonna subtract out $1,000 for part time work and we're gonna subtract out our Social Security. So there's Social Security. There's PT and there's our expenses, which means out of our portfolio, we have to get $364 per month with inflation. Now, let me stop here just for a second because you might be hollering at me. Hey, Drew, she's taking Social Security and she's working. Can she do that? Yes, she can. When you get to your full retirement age, you can make as much money as you want. Social Security doesn't care as long as you've claimed Social Security at your full retirement age. If you claim Social Security before your full retirement age and you're working, so if you claim at 62, 63, 64, 65, or 66, and you're still working, there is a threshold, the amount of money that you're allowed to make. Right now it's about $20,000, it goes up every year. If you make more than the IRS threshold, they're gonna claw back $1 for every $2 you make over that from your Social Security benefit. So all those people who tell you to take Social Security early, keep working and invest it, they're wrong. Did I say that right? Yes, they're wrong. So you wanna be real careful when you're claiming social security, okay, and when you're working. Okay, so 67 to 77, we're at 87, 756. What will we have in 10 years? We'll have $6,549. That is not enough to retire 
at 60. So can I retire at 60 with $250,000 saved for retirement, $3,000 of expenses and working part-time? No, we cannot. It does not work. Now, let's look at can I retire at 60, $250,000, and let's take Social Security at 62. Why do I want to do that? I want to show you an alternative that might stretch this money out a little bit longer and give Joanne the exact information that she wants. All right, can I retire at 60 with $250,000 saved for retirement and I'm going to claim Social Security at 62 years old. So we've got Joanne, she's 60. We're gonna claim Social Security at 62. Now, we just looked at if she takes Social Security at 67, her money only lasts to the age 77. So I wanna look at taking Social Security early at 62, which means she would only get 70% of her full retirement benefit. Her full retirement benefit is $2,500. 70% of that is only, what is that, $1,750. So $1,750 is her 70% of her full retirement. Now, we've got to bridge the gap between 60 and 62, and she's gonna work part-time for this time. So she's gonna fully retire as a flight attendant at 60, but she's gonna work part-time as a flight attendant to keep her perks. So let's look at this. So we go to 62, 6% is our rate of return, and 3% is inflation. So the money in the market's gonna earn 6%, our expenses are gonna be inflated by 3% every year. Her expenses don't include anything that is fixed. It's all variable, okay? So that means she needs $3,000. She's gonna make part-time. So 2,000 is what has to come out of her investments. So this is her income, this is her PT, and this is her expenses. What's her 250,000 in retirement savings gonna look like at 62? Well, it's gonna be 224,000. One, zero, seven. Okay, so that's how much she has at 62. We've gone down about $25,000 in the last two years and we're projecting out a 6% rate of return. Now, if the rate of return on her money's higher, let's say she gets seven, eight, nine percent the market has some really good years, hey, this could be higher. If the market has some really poor years, this could be lower. That's why we're geometrically projecting out these rates of return. We're not necessarily caring about the month to month or the year over year movements in the market. We wanna look at this over a long term. Now, keep in mind, when we run the EKG in the software, we're just on the board right now. If the board works, then we go to the software. If in the software, we, it works, then we start to look at market returns and we, we start to look at sequence of return risk. What's the risk on your retirement if the market stinks the first couple years? And so we look at that. And then listen, if you want an EKG, if you want a financial plan, if you want a detailed financial plan to get you to through retirement and protect your ability to stay in retirement, check out the description below. Let's get together and do that. Now, 62, we got $224,107. Now let's do a decade. Let's go 62 to 72. And we're gonna kick on Social Security. We're gonna get 6% on our money in the market. So this is gonna get 6% in the market. There's gonna be 3% inflation on our expenses, okay, over that decade. So that 10 years, that's 62 to 72. Our expenses now are 3260. That's the inflation from the two years here, right? So we increased right there. We're still gonna work part-time. We're gonna take out $1,000. That's our part-time work because we're gonna do that until 80. So we're gonna work part-time until 80. And then here comes 1750. This is our social security. That's 70% of our full retirement benefit, which means she's gonna have to take out $545 from this 224 with inflation, okay, for the next decade. Now, here's the thing you wanna protect against. We're taking Social Security early. If you take Social Security early, you're only allowed to make a certain amount of money un over a th under a threshold. Right now, it's about $20,000. If she's gonna make more than $1,000 a month, if she's gonna make 25, 30, $40,000, it does not make sense for Joanne to start taking Social Security. But because she's gonna stay below the threshold, 
it makes sense for her to take Social Security because we're trying to see, can she retire at 60, work part-time, how long is this money going to last? So, 62 to 72, we go down to 220,273. So look at that. We actually claimed Social Security early and we're in a really good spot. Remember, if she claimed Social Security at 67, she's actually out of money at 77 years old. Well, back up five years at 72, she's got $220,000 and she claimed Social Security early. So when you read a Forbes article or you watch somebody on TV or Market Watch and they say, oh, you only want to claim Social Security at 67, you only want to claim Social Security at 70, it might not make sense. It, it has to be a decision on your individual situation, your family situation. Now, Joanne's single, but what if she was married? What if there were spousal benefits involved? What if there was another worker that were, was younger? Whatever, we've got to look at that, right? So 72, we got 220,000 to 73. Now let's go another decade, let's go to 82. Remember, 6% is our rate of return on the money in the market. Okay, 3% is our inflation. So let's look at this. Expenses now have gone from 3260 to 4497. Okay? So you see that? That's inflation. I always say God's greatest gift outside of Jesus is compound interest. It works in the good and it works in the bad. Inflation works in the bad on expenses. We've gone from 3000 at 60 to 4497. 12 years later, that's 3% on variable expenses. Now she's still gonna work part-time for a couple years, okay? Just $1,000 for eight more years. So that's, that's eight more years, and we're gonna end that at 80. So at 80, it's zero. And her Social Security COLA has gone from 1750 to 2258, okay? So in 10 years, We've grown Social Security from 1750 to 2258. We're using 3% COLA increases on Social Security as well. It's 3.27 is the CPI for Social Security since 1973. We're gonna use 3% as a round number because we're on the board, okay? So 4497 minus 1000 minus 2258 means we need $1,274 coming off of our investments each month with inflation from 72 to 82. And at 82 years old, we have $18,500. And we don't last very much longer than that. So at 82, we basically go to zero. So for Joanne, look at this. We retire at 60 with $250,000. We work part time, okay, which gets us to 82. 1850 is left. Now 18,500. Now she still has a home that's worth about $300,000, which could, we could do a reverse mortgage, we could sell that. But let's say we don't want to do that. Can she earn a little bit more? What if we added in another $500, another $6,000 a year? What if we did that? We stayed below the threshold for taking social security and we're able to add in another $6,000. We may be able to last this even longer. So Joanne felt comfort in this. She actually is not going to retire. She's going to keep working for a year or more, but now she sees that, hey, it could work even though she doesn't have $2 million, even though she didn't have one and a half million dollars, based on her lifestyle, based on where she's at, she can have the possibility to retire. And so can you, you don't have to have $5 million to retire. You just have to have a plan. You have to have a budget and you really need a financial EKG. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.